Now we know that finite hypothesis class is spike learnable. We know also mm, how to redefine, uh, relax some assumption and define agnostic spike learnable classes with uh, general uh, or generalizable uh, loss functions. Um, let's now look at another general tool called uniform convergence or learning by uniform convergence. So uh, we're receiving a training set S and uh, for if because our hypothesis class H is finite, we can brute force simply go over all possible H, um, small H, hypothesis in the hypothesis set, evaluate empirical loss and return an H for which empirical loss is minimized, right? In principle. And so we hope that our minimizer of the empirical loss is also a minimizer of the true loss, or at least it's close to it. Uh, say, saying the same informally is that it is suffices to show that empirical risk for all hypotheses in the hypothesis in the finite hypothesis class is a good approximation of the true risk. Empirical risk is a good approximation of the true risk. If we can show that, uh, then we know it's like uh, the class is learnable, pack learnable. So let's um, define that formally, what we mean. Um, epsilon representative sample. What is an epsilon representative sample? A training set is called epsilon representative with respect to domain Z, finite uh, hypothesis set H, generalized loss L, and data distribution D. If for all hypotheses in the hypothesis set H, the difference or the absolute value of the difference between the empirical loss and the true loss is less than or equal to epsilon. This is epsilon representative sum. So now, assume that our training set S is epsilon over 2 representative with respect to the domain Z or um, fi uh, finite hypothesis set H generalized loss L and distribution T then the output of empirical risk minimization or in empirical risk minimizer on that training set S which is uh, H sub S or hypothesis that belongs to the minimizer uh, the set of hypotheses that are minimizing uh, the loss because there could be duplicates the empirical loss and it satisfies so if S is epsilon over 2 representative then empirical risk minimizing solution satisfies the following inequality the true loss on this minimizing hypothesis and it's minimizing empirical risks that's what this uh, sub-index tells us is less than or equal to uh, a minimizer hypothesis of the true loss plus epsilon wait but this is the definition of um, agnostic back learnability how is that true? Well, let's prove it. So we can prove it as follows. 
let's take the definition of epsilon representative sample. It just tells us that a sample is epsilon representative is for all if for all hypotheses in the hypothesis class H the difference of empirical loss and true loss is less than or equal to epsilon. Since we're talking about epsilon over 2, let's just write epsilon over 2. So because of that, this first inequality holds. Just a little detail. So let's say if LD is less, uh, so if true loss is less than the sample loss, then trivially LD over H is less than or equal to, well, it will be less, plus epsilon over two, right? If LD is larger than LS, but their difference is smaller than epsilon over 2, then clearly this inequality still holds because, because of this inequality. Uh, then, because H sub S is the minimizer already, it's... Um, a hypothesis from the hypothesis set uh, large H that minimizes empirical loss. Any other hypothesis is either um, the same, gives us either the same empirical loss or larger empirical loss. So this inequality holds as well. Then now uh, from here we can go to here by uh, noticing that we can replace LS empirical loss by um, uh, yes by this quantity doing just the similar trick right um, and um, but just this there is no difference it's symmetric argument and once we have once we have it we know that uh, this expression equals to the expression on the right. We'll just sum up uh, the epsilons and get our epsilon. But this is nothing but uh, our original um, expression of um, agnostic peculiar ability. So to ensure that empirical risk minimization rule is an agnostic path learner, it suffices to show that with probability of at least one minus delta over the random choice of a training set, it will be an epsilon representative training set. So that's another tool. This uh, uh, kind of concludes um, a little... Uh, superficial intro exposition of pack learnability and um, uh, pack, pack learnability theory. So who is who are we to blame for that theory and uh, for creation of that theory for us? So mostly it's uh, those two people, 
Vladimir Vapnik and Alexei Chervenenkis. In 1971, uh, 71, they created uh, computational learning theory. And uh, Leslie Valiant, um, in 1994, created packed learnability uh, definition. Uh, so he introduced um, uh, a different, a precise mathematical definition of uh, which hypothesis classes are learnable. And in 2010, he got a Turing Award for that. That's the Nobel Prize of Computer Science. And uh, that's it for today's lecture. Uh, I hope you had fun.